Let's solve a problem. So we have steam at 300 meters cubed per minute. What is that information given? 300 meter cube per minute, what does that mean? That's a volumetric flow rate, right? So a lot of times you just start organizing information. AV comma one is gonna be 300 meters cubed per minute. And a pressure one of 80 bar and a temperature one of 520 degrees C enters a well insulated turbine. So maybe we think about the turbine here we're going to come in at state one. That's why I put all the subscripts there. And this is some turbine. You can give it some particular shape because often they give it a shape like this, indicating that it's coming in here and going through increasingly large passages. And that's the typical shape of a steam turbine. It needs more room as it expands at lower pressure because the specific volume has changed so much. It's occupying the same kilograms, occupying a lot larger volume. It's a well insulated turbine. So we put Q dot equal to zero. Through a diameter, D1, that's inlet pipe, the diameter 0.7 meter. 20% of the mass exits through um, at 60 bar. So maybe I think it, some of it exits at two. And I think the, the, the mass exiting at two is equal to 20% of the mass flow rate in at one. Well, I don't know what the mass flow rate in at one. Maybe I'll calculate it. And it exits at a P2 of uh, 60 bar, lower pressure, and a T2 of 400 degrees C. So it decreased pressure, decreased temperature, lower enthalpy. Some of that enthalpy is converted into useful rotational power of that shaft. That energy transfer, that's what's happening in this uh, energy conversion, I should say, inside this turbine. And it has a diameter, two of 0.3 meters for the exit pipe. The rest exits at a pressure of 0.7, so maybe I think about state three, it's exiting. And the mass flow rate at three, I don't know, the pressure at three is 0.7 bar. Pause for a minute, 0.7 bar. Tell me a little bit about that pressure compared to atmospheric pressure. Below. It's below. This is always throws students for a loop. We're going to have power plants and we're going to have steam inside of pipes. And some places inside the loop, it's going to be very high pressure. And some places, it's going to be very low pressure, 0.7 bar or lower pressure. Hold it. How can you have steam in a pipe lower than atmospheric pressure? That's the magic of power plants. Yes, we do. Engineers, yes, we do. And so one of the whole things is, is if, if you poke the hole, I like to ask this question. If I poke the hole in that exit pipe at state three where the pressure inside the pipe is 0.7 bar, would air rush in or would steam rush out of the hole in the pipe, in the wall of the pipe? Air would rush in. But I can get people all, all the time. Oh, steam's going to rush out of that hole of that pipe. It's a pipe in a power plant. That steam's under high pressure. In this case, it's not. All right, we continue on. So we also have the quality. Maybe I put X. Maybe I put it down here. X3 is uh, 90%. Why? Because I'm going to probably try and organize my information. T3 and D3 are probably given. And it's quality 90% through a diameter of 1.5 meter pipe. Assuming steady state operation determined for part A, the mass flow rate of steam into the turbine. So how do I find this mass flow rate of steam into the turbine? Well, the mass flow rate is the volumetric flow rate divided by the specific volume. True? Okay. So we think, okay, this two pieces of information, it's probably superheated steam. We confirm it is superheated steam. And then we can go to the tables and we can get V1. And the V1 is uh, 0 0.04313 meters cubed per kilogram. We're probably going to do an energy balance in a minute. While I'm there, let's get H1, 3447.7 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so when we calculate 
with this volumetric flow rate divided by the specific volume, we calculate that the mass flow rate at 1 is 115.9 kilograms per second, the answer to part A. Part B, steam velocity at 60 bar exit. So they want me to calculate the velocity at the exit, okay? How do I calculate the velocity at that 60 bar exit, which is V2, state 2? Yeah, M dot 2 is equal to area 2, velocity at 2, divided by the specific volume at 2, same equation. And so V2 is equal to the M dot 2, specific volume 2, divided by the area 2. And so the M dot 2 is 20% of M dot 1. And so uh, I'm going to try to put it right here. M dot uh, 2 is like 23.18 kilogram per second. And so that comes in there. I need the specific volume. Well, at that pressure and that temperature, I verify that, oh, it's superheated vapor still. And I get that the specific volume at state 2 from the tables, 0 0.04739 meter cube per kilogram, as well as the enthalpy at 2, 3177.2 kilojoules per kilogram. All right. Now, that allows us to calculate the exit speed at 2. And the exit speed at 2 comes in at... Uh, 15.54 meters per second. That's part B. What is the steam velocity at point 7 bar exit? So what is the velocity at state 3? Well, it would be the same strategy, wouldn't it? V3 is equal to M dot 3 specific volume at 3 divided by the area 3. Wouldn't it be that? The only challenge is, is maybe using, I have, I look at this, it's because it's a quality of 90%, it's liquid vapor, so V3 is equal to V sub F at that pressure, plus the quality at 3, V sub G minus V sub F, so a little bit of work to get the specific volume at state 3. The specific volume at state 3 comes in at 2.1286 meter cube per kilogram. And the same thing for enthalpy 3, H of F plus quality at 3 times H of G minus H of F, and you can get the quality, I mean, sorry, the enthalpy, 2431.67 kilojoules per kilogram. We'll need that in a second. So once I had the specific volume at 3, the mass flow rate at 3 is 80% of the mass flow rate at 1. So that mass flow rate at 3 <coughs> comes in at 92.74 kilograms per second. And the area is pi d squared over 4. And so we get the exit speed at 3 is equal to 111.7 kilograms per second. It's a lot faster, isn't it? I mean, yeah, meters per second. It's a lot faster, isn't it? The next part, uh, part D, what is the total power produced by the turbine? Let me scroll down a little bit and uh, I introduce this control volume. We did it already for the conservation of mass. What happened there? Edit, undo. All right, try this again. So that's our control volume we use for the conservation of mass so that 20% left at exit 2, 80% left at exit 1. 
but we do the energy balance. Let me just write it out in its grand and glorious form. The change of energy in the side of control volume with respect to time is equal to rate at which flows in with heat minus it goes out with shaft work. Here is W dot CV, shaft work out of the turbine. Plus, we have the mass flow rate coming in, bringing with its enthalpy in, specific kinetic energy in, potential energy in, minus the mass flow rate exit at 2 times enthalpy 2 plus its kinetic energy at 2 plus the potential energy at 2 minus the mass flow rate at 3 times enthalpy at 3 plus the kinetic energy at 3 plus the potential energy at 3. I tried to expand those terms. Would I, is there possibly another term that I left out or does this look like it? It's pretty well it. So we have two mass flow rates out, so there's two minus signs in front of those m.2 and m.3. All right, so why is this term zero? Steady state. Why is this term zero? It's a well-insulated turbine. What about the change of potential energy? They didn't really tell me to neglect potential energy. It's just a standard assumption unless there's a lot of elevation information given. There's no elevation given. And then we say, well, we should be able to neglect the kinetic energy. But we don't have to neglect it because we have the information to calculate it. True? That isn't this specific kinetic energy just one half V squared and we have all the Vs. We have V1, V2, and V3. So let's include the kinetic energy part. So what we find is that the power out is equal to the mass flow rate at 1. I'm going to put 115.9 kilograms per second times the enthalpy at 1, 3447.7, plus the specific kinetic energy at 1. Maybe I could have put a separate line here. Kinetic energy at 1 is 1 half V1 squared. And that velocity at 1, um, I didn't write down a value for it but it comes in at 12.99 meters per second, hence the specific kinetic energy at 1 is 0 0.0844 kilojoules per kilogram. Let me expand that a little bit on this side. So we have the velocity at 1 with a little bit of work comes in at 12.992 meters per second. How do I get that specific kinetic energy, 0 0.0844? Well, you put the kinetic energy at 1 is equal to 1 half V1, 12.992 squared, meters squared per second squared. But what unit conversion do I need to use? 1,000 meters squared per second squared is precisely 1 kilojoule per kilogram. True? And so this comes in at a 0 0.0844. Think about, compare 0 0.0844 to 3,400. That's negligible. The kinetic energy part of the energy coming in is negligible. Okay. Then we're going to put minus the mass flow rate at 223.186 times the enthalpy at 2. Enthalpy at 2 was 3177.2 plus the kinetic energy at 2.121. Negligible as well. Minus the mass flow rate at 3. Mass flow rate at 3, 92.743. Enthalpy at 3, 2431.67 plus the kinetic energy at 3. The kinetic energy, because the speed is so much higher, is 6.24. So the kinetic energy at that high speed is it's more appreciable. Possibly, you know, it's still pretty small compared to the other ones. But you then calculate the power, 99,930 kilowatts. That makes sense? So we can analyze steam turbines or gas turbines as well.